So this video goes through the basics and the ideas behind adding and subtracting fractions that have like denominators. That is, if you have two fractions and their denominators are the same, how is it that you add or subtract those fractions? So first, let's take the obvious question of what is a fraction and what does it represent? Because we really can't talk about adding and subtracting fractions unless we know what a fraction is and what it represents. And at its core, it represents a part of a whole. Um, it can represent more than a whole, uh, surely, if it's an improper fraction. But um, at the core of what a fraction such as 4 fifths is, it represents a part of a whole, where it has a denominator that represents the total. And it has a numerator that represents some part of that total, some unique section of the total that we're thinking about and we're talking about. So let's look at an example here of these um, colored dots here. And let's say this represents a class of students, or at least students who are here today, and what their favorite colors are. So as you can see, we have four students here whose favorite color is yellow, three students whose favorite color is green, four whose favorite color is red, and one whose favorite color is blue, three whose favorite color are purple. So in order to talk about what this means with fractions, we have to know a few things. First, we have to know that there are 15 total students because we have to understand what the total um, amount of students are and what that denominator is. And then, based on that, we can talk about the unique section of the students that have that favorite color. And understanding this is important to understanding the idea of adding and subtracting fractions of like denominators. So if we look at the group that has yellow as their favorite color that's being circled in black now, we can say that this group of four students is this unique set out of the total of 15. So the fraction of students whose favorite color is yellow is 4 out of 15. Similarly, we can go for 3 out of 15 with the green, another 4 out of 15 because we have 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, students there, 1 out of 15 for blue, and then 1, 2, 3 out of 15 for purple. And those fractions are represented right here. So now, those being the fractions, now we need to think about how could we add or subtract them. And in that case, we can take an example of, well, what if we wanted to talk about the number of students who together have blue or purple as their favorite colors? So we have one-third that has, or sorry, one-fifteenth that has blue, three-fifteenths that has purple. So to talk about the two of them together, we add one fifteenth plus three fifteenths because those are the fractions of the students whose favorite colors are blue and purple respectively. Uh, so taking a look back one slide at the total number of students, if we try to add the blue pur the blue uh, students and the purple students together, it really doesn't change the total number of students that we have. In all, we're still going to have 15 total students in the class, so this fraction is still going to be out of a total of 15. And in this case, we have one student for blue, and we have three students for purple. So that special unique subset that we're talking about that represents the fraction uh, of itself is one plus three out of the same 15 total students. In all, that gives us four out of 15. And what that tells us is two very specific things. First, to um, talk about adding the fractions of students in the class, the denominator, which is being circled in green now, doesn't change. The denominator stays exactly the same as it was um, when we had the total students, because the total number of students doesn't change. And secondly, in order to find the numerator, all we did was add together the two numerators of our original fractions. One student whose favorite color is blue, three students whose favorite color are purple. And that tells us the two, diff two important facts that we need about adding or subtracting fractions with like denominators. And that is to add or subtract fractions with like denominators, one, simply add or subtract the numerators. Very simple, whatever they are, add or subtract the numerators and keep the original denominator. Um, we don't add or subtract the denominators themselves because if we think back to this example with the students, then we can see that the total number of students doesn't change. And generally, that's going to be true no matter what two fractions you add or subtract with like denominators. So let's look at these four example problems here. Now go ahead um, and pause the video and see if you can figure out just 
with these two ones that are starred here in blue. We'll get to the ones with variables here in a second. For the two that are starred blue, 17 25ths minus 8 25ths and 14 90ths plus 101 90ths, see if you can follow those rules that we explored in the last example and then set out here. Add or subtract the numerators and keep the original denominator. So go ahead and pause the video, take a, a look at that um, on your own, and then unpause it when you're ready to move on. So now if you've looked at them, you should recognize uh, two important things. First, and this is usually where I start, is that the denominators of our two fractions are going to stay the same. These two fractions in the upper left-hand corner are out of 25, so our answer is going to be out of 25. We may be able to simplify the fraction, but we can keep that set out of 25 there as it is. And now we need to subtract uh, the numerators, which is the second important thing. We just take 17 minus 8. Just take 17 minus 8, and that is our answer, 9 out of 25. Similarly, for this addition problem, our denominator is going to stay the same at 90, as our denominators are in our original fractions, and this time we're going to add the numerators together. 14 plus 101 is 115. So improper though it is, and unsimplified though it is, our answer to the fraction for the second blue star in the upper right-hand corner is 115 over 90. And now the same is true for examples if you have variables. Now whether you have a variable in the numerator or a variable in the denominator, you still just keep the denominators the same and add or subtract the numerators. So if we look in the bottom right-hand corner at the red star, um, our denominator is 12 in both cases. That means our denominator for the final fraction is going to be 12. And now we're going to do some work down here in the lower left-hand corner of this box because our numerator is 3x plus 8x. And if we remember back to our lessons on um, combining like terms, we see that these two terms both have an x as a variable. So in order to do that, so in order to combine them into a single term, all we do is add their coefficients together. So in this case, 3 plus 8 is equal to 11. So our final answer for this fraction is 11x, because that's what happens if we combine their like terms, over 12. Similarly, and go ahead and pause the video and see if you can uh, finish the problem with the green star, what is this going, what is this uh, addition going to be equal to in the end? Notice that our denominators are the same, but our numerators are not like terms. The 3x has a variable x, and the 11 is a constant. So you should have recognized immediately that 5 is going to be our final denominator. Um, and then we get to the numerator, which is 3x, and then we're going to add 11 to it. Now, if this were 3x plus 11x, then we could combine the 3x and 11, uh, and 11x, and make it into 14x. But in this case, because 11 does not have an x with it, we actually can't do that. We can't combine two terms that have different variables. So we're going to go ahead and delete this here to make sure that there's no confusion and just come back up to the 11. It is 3x plus 11. And because we can't do any combinations here, that actually is just our final answer. 3x plus 11. Even though it may not look particularly pretty or particularly um, compact, writing it as just 3x plus 11 over 5, that's all we can do because we don't have any like terms there. So once again, Adding and subtracting fractions, important with like denominators. All you do is add or subtract the numerators, whatever it is, and then keep the same denominator. And no matter what you have, no matter whether you have monomials, no matter whether you have numbers, you can just add or subtract the numerators, keep the denominators, simplify the constants, combine like terms, and you will eventually arrive at your answer.